Hello. The University of Texas at Tyler Honors Program had a colloquium on February 1st when Dr. Paul Spudis of the Lunar Planetary Institute was on hand to talk about the moon and the importance of returning to the moon. He gave a plan to do this, and Talon Student Media was on hand to capture highlights of the lecture and the Q&A program after his lecture. So, one of my favorite quotes was from uh, Kraft Erica, who once said that if God had intended man to become a space species, he would have given him a moon. Now, why did he say that? He said that because he recognized that the moon is useful, the moon has value. And that's what I try to convey here. The value of the moon is that it's close and it has what we need to create new capability. And by going there and doing this, developing a, a, a lunar outpost that gives you these new capabilities and products, you can begin to actually uh, move both humanity and uh, human culture deeper into space. All right, if that's a desirable goal, and let's just assume for a moment that, that you agree with it, there are certain things that follow from it. Why, why, if this is such a great idea, what's the problem? Well, the first problem is space flight is difficult. And I, so, fundamentally, the way we do operate in space has not changed in the last 50 years. We basically design a spacecraft, we throw it away after its use, we consider that the data or the knowledge it obtains or the capability it leaves is, is the end result. So we're buying capability, we're buying knowledge, but we're not leaving a space infrastructure. When you throw away your equipment after the first use, you're not really, make, you're not really getting the value out of that equipment, no matter how much it costs you to, to develop it. And the reason for this, again, is the fact that you're having to take up most of the mass with the propellant, with the dumb mass that actually makes up most of the mass of your vehicle. Now, an alternative model would be not to launch this stuff up from the bottom of the Earth's well every time, but to get the dumb mass that you need from sources in space, not sources from the first surface of the Earth, which have to come out of the gravity well, sources from space. And we now know that there are sources in space that can serve that, and that's where the value of the moon comes in. Unlike every other object in the solar system, the moon is the closest object to us. It's only 400,000 kilometers away. With a normal rocket ride, that's about three days. It's about a three-day trip. But in, in general terms, because the moon is in orbit around the Earth, you can go any time. There is a launch window to the moon open 24-7. For example, to go to Mars, you can only go once every 26 months. And the launch window is only open for about two weeks. If you miss that window, then you can't go again for another, two, another 26 months. And finally, the moon is useful. And it's useful because it has material and energy resources that we can use to create new spaceflight capability. Uh, my question is directed at, so theoretically we get to the moon and we're able to use it for resource extraction as well as scientific development and also establishing a, a space-based economic value mm -hmm. to the moon. Um, but the question I kind of am looking at is, even if we are able to do that, what is preventing us from damaging the natural integrity of the moon and the spaces surrounding it, concerning, for instance, the United States um, and any other countries that are looking towards uh, controlled fuel economy, fracking damages water supplies, um, where you're currently still a uh, fossil fuel-based uh, species trying to keep producing transportation, what is to prevent us from damaging the natural resources that we would need to extract uh, and thereby making them not usable for future generations and thereby destroying the very purpose of having the legacy infrastructures? Well, you know, there's a difference between using the resources of the moon and developing a resource on the Earth. Um, the Earth has a bias here. And when you, when you develop resources on the Earth, Somehow you impact that. Sometimes it's a minor negligible impact, sometimes it's a major impact. And you have to worry about that. You have to deal with it. You have to take steps to mitigate it. Nothing lives on the moon. All right? There's nothing there except what we put there. And it's, it's, it's basically a giant orbiting rock. And I consider it, it it's almost a, an example of the, uh, of the uh, uh, you know, the, uh, you've heard the book, The Cosmological Anthropomorphic Principle. And it's, it's the idea that somehow the universe seems constructed especially to allow us to understand it. And I look upon the moon as very much in that way. It's, we've actually got a source of material and energy that's close to us that we can reach, that we can use with minimal effects, ill effects anyway, that allows us to bootstrap a capability that ultimately will take us
radius to all the different corners of the solar system. Yes, it will change the moon, but the moon's going to change anyway. It's going to change because if we don't do this, somebody else will do it. So it's, I, I just look upon, you know, change is inevitable. We, we, our presence has changed the Earth. Some people think that's a bad thing. Some people think that's a good thing. Right now, there are more people alive on the Earth than have ever lived, and they're living longer, happier, and healthier lives than they ever have. Right? And the reason they've done that is because we've discovered that by extracting and using resources, we can create a technical civilization that enables that. I look upon this as, as a step in that same direction.